Okay. Welcome to this week's episode of Talk and Footy, the show with production values to make TDS jealous. I'm your host Sean, and as with me always, my verbal sparring partner Dan. How are you going, Dan? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Uh, another big round of another big big weekend of footy under wraps. And it was. And uh, Parramatta getting the biggest upset of the round. And who would have thought the Eels could uh, give the Broncos a spanking at Suncorp? Ooh, it was it, it was uh, 42 to 22. Yeah. It was still was it 30 to 6 at half time? That was a big one. Yeah. Now punters didn't. I just didn't uh, realise that, and uh, but I was listening to Joey Johns on Triple M on the uh, on his call on the Monday night there, and uh, before the game he thought that uh, Parramatta had him on the edges, and sure enough that's uh, where the Broncos came up lame. Pretty astute call, but uh, I'll give you something though. I listened to Joey a bit on Monday nights. Uh, he likes to tip Parramatta because they tend to be a bit of long odds. Mm, uh, yeah. Worth the pain. Four dollars fifty there. <laughs> I'm sure he had a sneaky little slap just on that a one. Just a quiet one. Just a quiet one. Yeah. So. Uh, You'd be happy with uh, Penrith's golden point win then, mate. Always happy with the two points. Uh, whether you squeak it in or run away with it, yep. win's a win. That's it. Uh, good to see Flashback. Great to see Michael Gordon back for us. Uh, who only if we would have started with Lock and Coote at the start of the year and uh, Flash at fullback, like I said, to many a people, uh, maybe he might not be at Cronulla next year, but, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Yep. Good to see Flashback. Good to get a close one too for the Panthers. Uh, now, what else have we got for this uh, weekend? Well, I found out something very strange, mm. very interesting. What's that? I wake up Saturday morning um, fine. You wake up Saturday morning fine? A bit dusty, but all right. Yeah, not too bad, yeah. Turns out the world didn't end because the Broncos didn't play on a Friday night. Uh, yeah, go figure. Channel 9 would have you believe that Broncos have to play every Friday night. Now, uh, I did have someone uh, contact me during the week after our first episode. Uh, yeah. Um, friend of mine, she wanted to remain, uh, remain anonymous. Uh, let's call her Megan R. Megan R. Oh, no, no, bit, no. bit too uh, alcoholics anonymous for that one. Uh, yeah. Let's go with M. Roberts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she said she's sick and tired of because uh, she just moved to Queensland, sick and tired of having to see them every single week. I um, yeah, I can understand. Even Jonathan Thurston came out this week and said it yep. that he's sick of it, and he plays for the Cowboys. He's one of the Queensland teams. Yeah. And he wins a lot too. <laughs> he is quite the winger. <laughs> Uh, but that's, like we understand the concept, you know. Channel Nine wants a Queensland team to keep the ratings every Friday night. Well, there's three there though, isn't there? Yeah, there's three of them, mm. not just the one. Doesn't we have understand. To be Broncos every day. Yeah, we understand they're a one-town team, but come on, guys, you, like you're giving them a heads up. They've got seven days rest every week. Perfect example why we need the set schedule. Yeah, big time. And uh, this week in the uh, AFL, AFL uh, who gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, straight to our first topic. Who should house and who should hot? Already a fan favourite, Dan. Let us know. Should should house? No, should hot first. For me, this week's going to be uh, Nathan uh, Nathan Peets for South, right? Mm-hmm. Now, when uh, Isaac Luke got the band hammer, oh, also known as the uh, Adrian Morley effect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Isaac Luke with the band hammer. He uh, this bloke he stepped up big time, right? And I had hooker there for uh, South. It's going to yep. be tough for the coach to. Um, to choose between him when Isaac Luke's suspension's up. But, uh, Great headache to have for Manchester. Well, uh, that's his biggest problem, uh, and they don't have a lot of problems there at South, not at the moment. Not at all. Uh, um, yeah. So what about uh, who's... Uh, who's... Shit yeah. Now, this is going to make a lot of internet uh, commenters just drop their monocles into their uh, Doritos bags. Oh, dear God, no! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Billy Slater, his return for the Dragons was, was woeful. It's tough to watch. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he might have still been hurt. Um, maybe he was still hurt. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Melbourne could get fucked. <laughs> and uh, that's who's building my shit house this week, Sean. Well, I can tell you is shit house. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the Bondi Club, the Roosters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely poor. Always oh, good to see. <laughs> How did they end up in the grand final a couple of years ago? Is beyond me. Definitely wasn't break the NASA. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I do feel sorry for Mitchell Pearce, though. Uh, the budding playboy has been probably the best performer on the field. Mm. Uh, bar Sam Parrott though you know Sam Parrott's obviously got a green passes already yep um, but you know he's putting in he's doing everything he can to get his team over the line but they always seem to lose either in the last 10 minutes mm. or to get an absolute wallopy uh, he doesn't need to worry about his job the man who does need to worry is Brian Smith yeah, Brian Smith, yeah, right. yeah. how many premierships have you won now do you care yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I was you I'd be really worried if the uh, board comes out and publicly backs you Seriously, not doing good. No. Uh, but shit hot. Shit hot. 
We went with Josh Morris last week. I'm telling you now, his br twin brother Brett on fire. He's he's just a freak. Two blokes, um, no necks. <laughs> We seem to do well this week, um, considering there is that uh, the the trial coming up, finding mm. out who did steal their necks. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Next week's exclusive segment. <laughs> but no, honestly, I used to think the bloke was a winger. You know, I'd be on the back line moving a couple of sweeping plays. He puts the ball down on the uh, over the try line, proving me horribly wrong. I'm I'm thankful. I'm thankful. You you're on fire. In fact, you're so on fire. It's NBA Jam. Boom shakalaka. Rightio, that's what I think you got right now. Uh, what have we got after this? Yes. Oh, I do actually have some news. Yeah, yeah. Some news. yeah a friend of mine uh, got in contact with me letting me know that Ian Schubert has investigated the Manly Sea Eagles yeah. uh, due to some salary cap problems, third party payment infringements. Yeah. Uh, they've been cleared though. Okay. Yeah, turns out Glenn Stewart isn't the bloke in the Olympic Smackers ads. <laughs> Could have fooled me, swear to God, dead ringer. Uh, but yeah, then other news. Other news. Yeah, oh, oh, even more news. Even commentators. You, you hear it here first. That's the one. <laughs> Exclusive. Now, even commentators kind of with the super coach bug at the moment, right? Yeah. Now, Dan Ganae, the uh, regular Triple M commentator. Love him. Yeah, Love Monday him. Monday calls the Monday night games. The best. He's uh he's got a regular column in the paper now that um he's actually touched on super coach in the last couple of weeks here and. Yeah. Uh, He's, he's, he's saying he's struggling to uh, call games with the Supercoach teams, with the Supercoach players on the team there, because if, if one of his opponents, Supercoach opponents, players runs through the line, like Chris Hyington ran through the line and scored a try to break everyone's hearts the other week in Supercoach, he, he, he finds it tough to, uh, to call that game, you know? Like, like yeah. instead of, Hyington's through the line, here we go! It's, it's oh no, Hyington's through the line, oh, is he going to pass it on? Oh, no, he's crashed over, wow, well, you know. Supercoach, you know, changing the way we watch rugby league. Oh, uh, yeah, it's hard to stand past from that. Yeah, uh, I'll do have something for that as well. Like, uh, if for those of you that know out there, it's my first year as Supercoach. Yeah, and, uh, green on. Yeah, yeah, I'm currently ranked, um, uh, so anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Dan, my man over here, Animate Penguin, who explained to me this year that, yeah, Supercoach does make watching games that you don't normally care a lot more fun. Like, yep. Dan Ganane's having a bit of a problem staying impartial, mm. but for us, we love him, yep. the Roosters versus the Gold Coast. We yep. want Nate Miles to make that extra 15 tackles. So I want Greg Byrne to do that big left foot step and get an offload. I want to tour <laughs> Moga to yep. make his 21 average points a week. Oh. It all counts in the end. It does. I wanted to get me over the line. Supercoach changing the way that the average punter watches the game. Loving it. Definitely good. So right now, I think it's time that we flick, flick on the flux capacitor. Yep. Oh, got it to 88. And let's go back in time to a thing we like to call reminiscing. Mm, yes, yes. Then... Do you remember when North Sydney used to be in the comp? No, oh, I do. I do many years ago now. Yeah. Right now, the old North Sydney over there. Oh, the old white picket fence green. Yeah. Oh, oh, old old JT, Jason Taylor. Yeah. Old Flo. Ah, Red Flo. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one, mate. Gary Larson. Yep. Yeah. Billy Moore. Hey, don't forget about Brett Dallas. Remember Brett? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's great when you just score some touchlines there. Yeah. Not only there for Queensland as well, but he was also well renowned. Has unfortunately been the world's ugliest sportsman. Head like a drop pie. Yep. Only mother could love. <laughs> Poor bloke. Thankfully for him, though, the emergence of Chris Bosch as the world's ugliest man, not just in sport, but in all the world, mm. has taken that dubious honour off. NBA football, yeah, player. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Miami Heat, if you don't know him. Uh, Google him. It's under giraffe doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, breaking news, we found out it is <laughs> Chris Bosch stole the necks no. of both Brett and Joe Myers. <laughs> and a few other necklace fellows out there. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's uh, a... Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, well, we've got a bit, little bit more serious now, if you will, on the show. We're going to go into the, this week's hot topic. Yep. Yeah, um, now, this week, it's going to be about jerseys. You see tonight, Dan, women of the league around Canberra, looking lovely in his hot pink. Love the women. Can't complain. He does love the ladies. And myself, I'm in my Indigenous All-Stars jersey. This week is uh, Close the Gap week. Or, yeah, Close the Gap week. That's mm. definitely what it's for, uh, for Indigenous uh, health issues. But now, this is where it brings up our topic. A couple of teams are going to run out in their Indigenous jerseys this week. Fair enough. Good on them. Penrith don't have one. Doesn't bother me. There's a reason it doesn't bother me. There are too many jerseys 
to be worn. Yeah. The Warriors alone this year have nine. Yeah. They nine. have nine. That's I'm sure good. the Warriors didn't go through nine jerseys in the first nine years. Yeah. Like, seriously. Maximum, well, I, I can't see any more than five, yeah. but a maximum of six for special dispensation. Oh, suppose, but yeah. look, five. We'll name them, it's very easy. Yeah. Home. Yep. Yeah. It's a good start. Away. The opposite, if you will. Well, yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, women in league round, sure. as you see, beautiful. Uh, the heritage round, yep. definitely awesome. going to be needed. Yep. Yeah, every team well, we love going back, as you can tell by reminiscing. Yep. And also your specialty, whether it be you know close the gap round or yep. say for the Anzac Day jerseys, you know. Sure. Even though Manly deserve to be shot for their horrible. Big <laughs> time. Oh, it's, it's ridiculous Rubbish. this year for their one. Yeah, too many. I understand it's a revenue raiser for the clubs. You know, buy the jerseys. Money comes back to the club. Good work. I know you know you, you guys do, out there do realise that I'm the only dickhead who actually goes along with it. <laughs> it it's only me out there buying all those jerseys. Everyone else is getting one or two. Uh, you, you're killing me. I'm a merchandise person. You, you're ruining my wallet. Uh, yeah. It's Panthers' wallet. <laughs> what can I say? Um, yeah, it, it's stupid. You, you can't keep doing it. Um, the best thing is, though, I have heard a couple of good ideas thrown out there. Sure. Um, one of our favourites, Matty John, has come up with one. Good yep. player, even better personality. Um, for kids. Now, as growing up, I need one of my favourite players' jersey. Dan? Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah? Yeah. Beautiful. You didn't want seven of them, did you? No. No, no you had your favourite shirt. You, you didn't want five, so You don't have seven favourite shirts. You've got one no. favourite shirt. That's exactly. It. And look, you can put the number, whatever number and whatever player you want on the back of it. Nice yep. and easy. Uh, Matty John's has come up with this idea to make them reversible. Yep. So you can get them out. You know, home on the front, inside out, away is there. Bang on, beautiful. Plus, it'll cut down the price that it's got to cost for someone like me to pay $70 for a kid's jersey, especially a kid who's only one. Yeah. Well, that's, well you know, give him a couple of bananas and he's, uh, he's outgrown it already. You know? Yeah. Just ridiculous. So, guys, jerseys, cut it out, especially you Warriors. No, I do. You're killing us. Come on, one's a pink, especially yeah, pink. Put your hands Seriously. <laughs> Need a shirt just to get on a plane to get over the bloody, <laughs> bloody pond. Anyway, uh, right. moving on. Moving on. Right, so uh, last week, our tips. No, nah, not tips yet. We've got an award. Oh! We've got an award ooh, to hear now. Just one, one award this week, and it's uh, the Bang for Your Buck Award. Oh. Now, this uh, Bang for Your Buck Award goes to Chris Sandow this week. He's uh, instrumental in the Parramatta win. Yep. Yeah. And uh, worth every penny of the half a ton that they dropped on him for this season. What do you reckon, Shire? Right? Well, good to see he's finally won something. Mm. The award for all <laughs> <the> money. <laughs> yeah, when we see the rest of the world crumbling with their economies going into recession, it's good to see the blue and gold spending their money wisely. Mm. Good on you guys. Yeah. And all, that, all that revenue from all those jerseys that they... That they <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can definitely see why you guys have been so consistent since 1986. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alrighty, now this time we'll go to tips. We will go to tips. Yeah, uh, last week. Ooh, yeah, mm. well, well, it's a rare blemish on our impeccable record. Good time. Yeah. Do you see how close Highmarsh went to crashing over? About three metres. Yeah, it's a bit bigger than that. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. And Melbourne, well, they probably could have won if uh, if Brett Morris wasn't playing. Well, yeah. Well, and Billy Slater for that. Yeah. Whoever the coaches on that one. Yeah, thanks, guys. Mm. But uh, no, this week, Dan, what do you got for us? Canberra, of course. Hot and cold, week to week. Uh, last week got spanked. Yeah. Uh, week before, smashed them. Week before, got spanked. Week before, smashed them. I don't think. I, I'm seeing a pattern here. Yeah, there's definitely a pattern. Uh, true to form, there's. Uh, I don't think there's been uh, less than 16, 18 point spread yeah. in those games, uh, whether they win or loss. But uh, true to form, if they got spanked last week, it's 13 plus week this week. So Can Canberra up 13 plus? Canberra up 13 plus. I don't even know who they're playing, but um, cash see, money. Doesn't Get into seem it. to matter. Follow well, the trends. Let's go. Put that on. What about yourself? Mate, um, well, obviously, Melbourne did stuff me around last week, so I'm actually going to tip a game with them again, but I'm not going to tip a Melbourne win. Mm -hmm. But I'm also not tipping the Panthers to win this week. Um, after last week's a little bit of a schmozzle, I'm going to go for an over-under. Sure. I'm going to go on for 40 points under you're going to get on this game. So no more than 40 points are going to be scored. Yep. All right. I do believe it's probably going to be about 20 to 16. Sure. Could be the Panthers' way. 
Most likely not. Uh, we don't have a great record there, and they're due for a win. But we're on fire at the moment. Go on, boys, bring us home. Mm. Um, and just before we do stop this week, just a quick thing. Um, yep. Against South the other week, Penrith played uh, at ANZ. I got to go in the sheds, and yep. I got to meet Clinton. Very cool. Oh, yeah, good bloke. Yeah, actually, very good bloke. Yeah, the, uh, yeah Bender's back rower. Yep. Yeah, mate, genuinely nice guy. We got into a bit of a chat, and he just... Out of the blue, he offered to sign my jersey. Not only to sign my jersey, but to take it back to the whole team and get it signed as well. Um, nice. Yeah, he had to scoot off. So instead of just running away and making me wait, he went and got it done and mailed it back to me. Paid for the stamp and everything. Oh, beautiful. Now, look at that. He didn't have to do anything like this. Very I was just stuff. happy to shake his hand. Yeah. Top bloke, yeah. not just a top footballer, but a top person as well. So if by any crazy means you're watching out there, thank you very much, Clint. Cheers, Clint. Yeah, cheers. With that, we'll raise our glasses. Dan, fantastic episode again. Cheers, Sean. No worries. And for those who can, do. For those who can't, well, obviously, they'll be coming in critics. <laughs> thank you very much. Have a good one. See you later. Boom, shakalaka.